Hey, what's good? What's good? We back. Yours truly, the one and only Paul Pickett, host of the Paul Pickett Podcast, a.k.a. Triple P, a.k.a. the Common Sense Podcast, your source for music, sports, politics, world events, and much more. We're going to have a guest on here soon, um, up-and-coming uh, music artist, hip-hop artist out of uh, Alabama, PBE Pluto. Before we do this, give you a word from one of our sponsors. <laughs> Me and my team are never been link up They're gonna be drink up We sit down and relax and have few glasses When there's things to think about Like I'm nice with the boss When I tend to the boss And I'm not talking drink up So tell the bartender that's tend to the bar that please pass me a big cup up And tell the waitress is waiting on us So put a little ice in it Now watch the ice become weightless Like the spaceships that I be sitting in No wait and listen No they're waiting for that tropical twist That'll take a taste but Now tell you so Now I insist it's the Dizzle. That's right. Check us out. Dizzlebrand.com. Hold on one, one second. I think our guest is going to be coming in real shortly. So check it out. Dizzlebrand.com. Dizzle, premium luxury liqueur mixed with agave tequila, French cognac, and orange liquor mango mix. Just throw your dizzle on ice and it's nice. If you want to order your very own bottle or bottles of Dizzle Premium Luxury Liqueur, go to DizzleBrand.com, click on Our Locations, must be 21 and over, shipping and handling is included. And our guest has seen his video pop up. We about to bring him in. Hold up. Let's get these dual things. What's hey, how good? you doing, man? What's good, my boy? What's good? What's good? How's the weather out there? It's still kind of hot as far as I know. Okay. Okay. Um, camera right there. Where you at? You at the crib right now? Yeah, for the moment. Got to get on the road. Where uh, you headed uh, soon? I got Atlanta tomorrow, and I got um, Greensboro, North Carolina, Saturday. Okay, that's close to me. I'm in Fayetteville, so that's probably about two or three hours away from me. Might be four though. Greensboro might be like four hours away though. Oh damn! And whatnot. Yeah, it's it's a few hours though. So how'd you come up with the, uh, your name PBE Pluto? It sounds like a like a spaced out name or something. <laughs> well, I ain't gonna lie. Pluto was something I've been called since a baby. You know what I'm saying? That was like the the nickname I knew before I knew my real name. But PBE was something that was added to my name a few years ago. Um, PB stand for Parker Boy Entertainment, which is my entertainment company. Oh, okay, okay, that makes a lot of sense. A lot yeah, of sense. And, and see, Park is my last name, you know. Um, so my family back in the days, you know, my uncles and stuff, they was known as the Parker Boys, and they was known for, you know, a lot of various things back then. So I just wanted to take the brand and turn it into something more positive. You know, what I'm saying when people okay. hear about Parker Boys. You know, you ain't thinking on the same time you used to be thinking on, you know, back in the days you thinking on, okay, they own businesses, they do music, they do, you know what I'm saying, they got great things going on in a positive light. So um, I added the PBE to my name because at first I was just going by Pluto. And, you know, once Future came, I didn't drop the Pluto album and, you know, all the other stuff that's associated with the name. And before I really understood SEO and all that different stuff like that on Google, like, I was just running with it because I'm thinking, you know, I'm good. But yeah. when I start understanding SEO, I start seeing, like. That's a tough name to, to try to get at the top page for. Yeah, you feel me? You, you got, got the you planet, got the Pluto, planet. And, yeah. and other things. Yeah. Fact. So, you know, when I start understanding that, I'm like, dang, I ain't going to never get to the, you know what I'm saying, top yeah. of one day. A fan hit me up. And was like, man, it took me an hour to find you. you yeah. Know? Was like, whoa. And from that point, I mean, I already knew I needed to change. Yeah. I just couldn't think of what to add. And I'm like, I done put so much investment, so much time. You know, and this might be speaking to another artist right here. But I felt like I put so much in it as Pluto. You feel me? Like, man, that's what I've been known my whole life. Yeah. Um, come up with no, you know what I'm saying, off the wall name or a name change, I got to change everything, whatever, whatever. But 
I wasn't thinking like I ain't even yeah. had my, you know what I'm saying, the sound that I got now, none of that, you know what I'm saying? I still had development to go anyway. So um I was trying different things like Pluto with the dollar sign. I ain't want to stray too far away from Pluto. So I'm like, yeah, it's Pluto with an extra O. All the type of stuff you feel me, one Pluto. <laughs> Everything I was putting in, somebody already had it. So I'm like, nah, I'm not trying to compete with nobody. Yeah. So I ended up ordering a um I had ordered my first uh custom charm. So I had ordered a Pluto charm and then I had got some more money. Cause this was like when I first started getting paid shows and features and stuff like that. So I, I you know, I said spend a little change. So I ain't have enough to get the whole uh, Parker Boy Entertainment logo. Okay. So I went to the jewel. I was like, well, shit, can you just do PBE? He was like, yeah, I could do that for you. With that. So when he uh, sent back the cat, he was like, I'm sending both of them to you at the same time. I ordered the Pluto piece probably a week or two before I got, I had him start on the PBE. And when he sent it, you know what I'm saying? Showing like how it's going to look. It had the PBE piece on the top and Pluto under. So I was like, right. PBE Pluto. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay, that dude got a. Why well, ain't been thinking of this? So I went online and started Googling it. Nothing popped up. I'm like, okay, good sign. It. I went to YouTube, typed it in, it ain't pop up. I was like, okay, PBE Pluto, this is it. So I changed all my social media that that exact day to PBE Pluto, and then you know started started my journey on building the PBE brand, and you know what I'm saying start associating everything with PBE, and it did take about a year before Google started catching up, you know yeah. what I'm saying, and associating a lot of my stuff. Well, I had a similar story to that, and that kind of reminds me of um, Two Chains being Titty Boy before, right? Because you know that was actually. Um, Cause I always wondered, like, why would you go with that rap name? Like, labels just wouldn't. It just doesn't sound label friendly. But that was a, a family uh, a nickname. I think his grandma gave him. And now yeah. you said that was a family nickname. Like, where where did that come from? Just calling you Pluto. It actually came from my grandma's sister. Okay. Uh, she my great never aunt. Say why? She never told me why. I think never I need to ask. She never told me why. She started calling me Pluto. Just one day she started calling me that, and then. Everybody else started calling it. I hated it at first, and then I grew to love it. Like, even when I was in school, they called me Pluto. The teachers called me Pluto. I went to the military. They was calling me Pluto. So Pluto. It was like, you know what yeah. I'm Everybody knew. So when Future did come with the Pluto setup, it confused a lot of people that knew me personally. Like, yeah. whoa, you know what I'm saying? Even though I met Future, you know, before he really took off, because Rocco and DJ Esco, I was owning a club at that time. And at the time, um, DJ Esco and them was going city to city. Future actually have family members in my city. So they was going anywhere. He had family members anywhere. They had family members, anybody that was yeah. tapped in with them. They was trying to book them shows in them cities. They'll book the venue yeah. and just try to do a party and pack it out. Like, these are the type of people I want on my team. You feel my son is actually happen you know what i'm saying and then he also come up with the dungeon family outcast and good yeah, yeah, yeah. as a young younger right a young cat yeah thanks so but, he, you know he definitely saying? was when, around it all the time and, and yeah. seeing the grind and seeing Fence. what was going on because i would say outcast put atlanta on the map i mean right and they thing. they definitely i always thought they were genius because they reinvented themselves that's kind of what you you kind of did also you kind of like reinvented yourself in the process it seems like Thanks. which can always be good for artists sometimes because some you know things get old after a while now what's growing what's life like growing up in alabama i'm from north carolina and when i think well, of alabama they always like they always put this perception like it's just dirt dirt poor man right well you know? alabama is you know what i'm saying a small city city you know what i'm saying like a lot of people usually well mobile is you feel me? a lot of people come here that have that perception of it and then yeah they like damn all up i ain't know it was like this down here yeah. like this and that you know what i'm saying so that's the whole thing but you know we we 
we like, I ain't gonna say we we like Atlanta, but you know, Atlanta, a lot of people consider the outskirts of Atlanta still Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? But it's like smaller, yeah. a bunch of smaller cities, you know, tapped in together. But Mobile is really about the same size of it, the actual Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, and it ain't no dirt roads and all that type yeah. of stuff, you know what I'm saying? City, we got everything that got in this regular city you feel me um we kind of we grew up more it can't like with projects and stuff like that a lot of people was like associated by neighborhoods and projects like we ain't do a lot of like game banging and stuff like that you know it was like yeah. where you from what hood you from what You're, that's how you north from. carolina is we're not really like the bloods and crips it's more like a, you know a neighborhood thing right and whatnot so yeah, we we kind of in that same sense pretty much, um, but we didn't really have a lot of the music industry going on. It was like an artist might sneak through the cracks, and then it'll be another ten years before you hear another one sneak through. But recently, it's been going crazy. Yeah, know I know you said there's like a dozen artists signed now. Who's the is Rich Boy the first artist to come out of Alabama? No. Who was the first mainstream uh, artist that I might be missing? Um, well, I don't know. Or somebody that first. I might I know. know. I that know. Was, uh, you know, you remember TQ that was signed to uh, I think Cash Money. Yeah, that's nah, not really I'm a, I'm a, I'm Cash know. Money had so many yeah artists that signed that never really came. He out was like an R and B saying He had like some braids. I think head. I might remember. Him. I think I do remember him. Yeah. 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 He had a uh, single, right? That was like yeah. one hundred or something. Yeah. Him. Then you had uh, T Bird. That is my baby him. daddy. Who the? Okay. Yeah. That's, okay. So he's from Alabama too. Yeah, he's from uh, Mobile. Um, then you had the last Mister Big. Okay. T- you know, time to go to trial. Then I remember him. And yeah, and he was, he, yeah, he was really popular when he came out. Mm-hmm. They made a big deal about that because it wasn't he really on trial. I uh, might, I don't remember I think he exactly. He was really on trial. He now, probably was. Is, I know he had just got out of jail impact? when he made it. Huh? What is the impact that these artists coming out had on like Mobile, like as bringing up the music scene? Has it helped back any? in the days or nowadays? Or just at all? Has it had any impact on, at all? Well, I would say back in the days, it gave us some bit of. Oh, oh you're back. You're good. Okay, my bad. Back you're in good. the days, it gave us. Oh, we lost her for a second. I can hear you, though. Yeah, my yeah, bad. Yeah, you're good. No, you're good. Yeah. This happens. This podcasting, man. All right. But look, so back in the days, you know what I'm saying, gave a little hope, you know what I'm saying? But it wasn't. So it was just like, a confidence booster, really. Yeah, yeah but it whatnot. wasn't like a lot of people that was popping. So people was doing it and they like blew up locally, but yeah. they didn't never like reach that next plateau, you know what I'm saying? So, um, but a lot of people were still grinding or whatever and, uh, you know, chopping down the trees and, and and still getting in motion, in motion a lot. And it's like the game switched. You know what I'm saying? When the internet came, a lot of folks that was like right at the cuff of, you know what I'm saying, possibly popping or blowing up, like the internet phase just swept all that out the way. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, damn, I got to relearn everything. I was just, you know what I'm saying? Cause you know, back in the days, you had to do guerrilla marketing. You had to go yeah, city yeah. to city, putting out posters street and flyers and, and radio, have street yeah. teams and radio and all that stuff. Now you could just make a post on Instagram or Facebook and, you know, everybody in Birmingham, North Carolina, wherever could see it if they tapped in. You know what I'm saying? Uh, people could share it enough to other folks get abreast of it. So, Well, let's touch know. on that. Is that a good thing or a bad thing for artists like you, up and coming artists like you? Is that a good um, thing or a bad thing? That when it comes the, to the internet, the phase, internet, yeah. Well, it could be good and bad. You know what I'm saying? It could be a great thing, or it could be detrimental to your career. Because some people, you only get one shot. You feel me? If you ain't got enough, you know, mind power, or the willingness, or the knowledge to maintain it, you know what I'm saying? You might 
got your shot too early and then it, you become a used to a wash up. Yeah. Um, and some people obtain, you know what I'm saying, this fame or success too fast and they don't know how to retain yeah, it reaction, or they get yeah. tied up with people that just tell them anything because they don't know enough information. You know, nowadays people don't want to go look for the info. They just want to, man, just, I'm trying to get on. Bro, you sitting on here inboxing me this, you could have been that damn doing some research. You feel me? You could have been Googling the same shit that I could tell you for yourself. You know, and then come and cross promote the information that you know with me. But you want me to just tell you everything. Like, I'm finna sit here and take time out of my day to worry about what you're trying to do. And I don't know you from a can of spit. You know what I'm saying? Or I might have shook your hand one time. Like, bro, you got to put in your own work, your own grind. You know what I'm saying? Shit, help me figure out some shit that I don't know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I have a reason to even be talking to you to help you elevate on what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? But people want something for nothing. Um but the great thing is, is if you understand the internet and you understand the motion, you know, it could be good for your career. You know what I'm saying? You can actually, you know, get things out there a lot faster. But I came up in the cuff of guerrilla marketing and the internet phase. So, you know, so I knew it from yeah. both ends. That's why I feel like I'm more successful as an independent artist because... It's I still do the guerrilla tactics, but I utilize the internet to maneuver with what That's I got. That's what I was about to say. Isn't it really just guerrilla marketing online now? It is, but you got to be strategic with it. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like you gotta, Timing is everything. And right. What you're posting has a lot to do with it as well. Right. And also when you're going, when you're handing out, uh, you know, promotional material, because nowadays, like you can't do how you used to. You can't just staple shit on poles and all that type of stuff. Like back in the day, they'll just send a street thing through your city and just plaster the city. Now you, you think get fines. You know, you I'm think saying? COVID had anything to do with killing the street teams? No. No. That thing to keep the street teams got killed before COVID. You think they just got lazy, or I think they just got complacent when it got came complacent. to the internet. Like who who finna pay you to go and put out something I can make a post? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or I could pay somebody else that's bigger to make the post for me. Yeah. And bring the people to me. Because people may not even read what you're putting out. But the reason I say, like you know, right. you got to kind of be a little bit more, you know, advanced when it comes to the guerrilla marketing. You can't do the same thing you see everybody else doing. Like, folks will give you a business card. Like, I go to events. I get 30 business cards, flight, this and that. Man, when I leave, I'm going to throw all this stuff away. I'm not going to remember. I ain't going to go to none of this stuff. The only thing I'm going to remember is something that was different. Like me, I don't hand out business cards. I hand yeah. out car air fresheners. Okay. So I give a person a car air freshener that has my face on it, my brand, my logo, also QR codes. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. when you put... This could help you. You know what I'm saying? Like your car can smell fresh. So when you put this in here, you got I got a rolling billboard in your in, in your car for 30 days. So everybody walk past your car seeing me. Everybody get in your car seeing me and smelling my scents and brand. Then they scanning or tapping in or finding out who it is. Even the kids, they're gonna be like, who this is? They can type it in on their little phone. And, you know what I'm saying? So, so you're basically I, giving away a free product, all right? Facts. Now, but, isn't that how the, the dope game and the rap game has always been? Like, you're supposed to give out a free sample. It, it's just like, them, any, like, you yeah, know, it, it's, it's a business. It's and, knowing, and, like, yeah. Right. It, it's just business. Like, if you open up a, a, a wing shop, like, sometimes you got to give away free you wings. Free wing, yeah. Yeah. It's so you can eat. try these new sauces or try the seasonings that we got so that you can lock in. Oh, yeah, I want them. Give me a 10 piece. I was going to yeah. get six. I want 10 because them hitting, you know what I'm saying? But you had to give one away in order for you to get them 10. So you're basically giving them a free sample without giving them away the music. And, and right. a lot more artists, I know the, too many artists, they're always just like, it's they don't want to give nothing away for free. So right. this should be the like the alternative to you not wanting to give away a free song, right? Just give away a free product outside of the music that that your name is stuck in the head all the time thanks 
you know, it's you programming. Know? And at the same yeah. time, you know, even if they give stuff away for free, they're giving away the same thing the next man just came on side of them, gave them the same exact thing. So yeah. how do I know which one I want to deal with or uh, if yeah. I want to deal with either one of y'all? But guess what? This right here is going to benefit. i give you a car air freshener. It's going to yeah. smell good for your car. You know what I'm saying? You might smoke. You might do whatever. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Man, it's going to keep my car fresh. Like, yeah, let me put this in here. This is going to benefit everybody that get in your car, not just you. You know what I'm saying? Now, what you doing is basically psychology. Now it's like, well, I ain't really standing music, but this car air freshener smell good. But everybody that get in the car saying, Damn, what that smell is? Oh, that's this yeah. car freshener I got from this dude. Who he is? Yeah. I mean, I don't know him. I met him at a conference. That hold on, let me look him up because shit. I need one of them. Where I, where I buy it from? I don't know. Look his name up. Now you see, oh, he do music. Now it's like they giving you, damn, hold on, let me do some research. I got this man in my car, and I don't even know you feel me, because everybody that get in when them scents jumping, they gonna say something. You know what I'm saying? And it's and gonna it's keep your name in there, right? Huh? Probably not too expensive, right? The the air freshener nah, is very inexpensive. That's what I thought. Yeah, but you got to think outside the box. Like, yeah, you got to think. Yeah, you know that setup may not work for every artist. Everybody, but. yeah, that's another thing. I'm glad you said that. Like people always see, like um, Lil Nas X makes it on TikTok, TikTok, so right. they think they all make it on TikTok. Or Man. Fifty Cent makes it in mixtapes. They think they all can make it on mixtapes. I mean, shouldn't they be trying all of these this- things out? A lot of this stuff be really like a punch and scheme. It's yeah. like, let me trap you in. Once you see yeah. one person win off, it, just like people saw, uh, what's the name? Was it Tory Lanez that did the the soul the 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 NFT for like NFT, uh, like yeah. one million NFTs? Yeah, I, I was yeah, talking so about I, that. All, all these people, oh, that. Dude, let's do the they NFTs. They think they can do it. Yeah. Need to do the, uh, hey man, I don't have to follow on this man. Got I ain't got you know what I'm saying. I ain't got the knowledge of. NFTs. Yeah. I just can't do this and think that it's going to get the same exact results. You know what I'm saying? So that's the thing. You can't always look at it like what you see is going to be exactly what you get because when it comes to business, you got to understand what you need to take from that. Like it's the fundamentals that you have to be looking at, not just I'm going to do exactly what he did. I see Paul doing this yeah. podcast. I'm going to do one. I see yeah. Paul got this website. Man, I can do that. No. You yeah. could take the fundamentals from that and create something different that people don't have. You know what I'm saying? And that's what stands out when it comes to anything when it comes to this game. Plus, you what never you're doing have the people- exact details, do you? Like, huh? okay. You never truly have the exact details of how somebody did something. Thanks. Like when little Nas X blew up on TikTok, you don't got the exact details of Thanks. who he might have paid to blow yeah, up on you, TikTok. You go, yeah, because you how going long, by what you how see. much money and 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 yeah. all these things. You're just thinking, oh, uh, you thinking, oh, he did it, I can do it, and you try to copy. No, this and it this the thing work. right here. This yeah. might iron it out better right here. They see the finished product. Yeah, but they don't know the see. ingredients. Yeah, yeah that, it's you're just right. like saying, great, great analogy, I see this pound analogy. cake. I can make a pound cake. I got one of these pound cake pans. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I got cake mix. I can make up. No. Yeah. It's the extra butter that he put in. It's the way that he let the pan sit in the oven 10 minutes before that, before he even yeah. pulled the batter in. You know, you don't know these and things. And we don't know that. Yeah, we don't yeah, know that. And we think make, we know that. We think yeah, we know that's that. Gonna, you don't know why yours falling apart as soon as it come out because you ain't sit the pan in the oven for 10 minutes and let it heat up with the oil in there so that it'll coat the pan. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And then take it out and pour the batter in there while the pan hot. That's what's giving it that moisture. And then this extra this and extra that making this happen. So if you don't know the exact ingredient, it's just like I was explaining to an artist last night um, about I say, you know, artists is like being at a puppet show, you know. You see the puppet moving and jumping and, and talking, but it's really somebody behind the scene that's pulling the strings and doing the talking, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So at a puppet show, you're going to go up to the puppet and shake his hand and say, let me get your autograph? You know what I'm saying? This puppet don't know nothing. I was explaining also, like, you could go to these mainstream artists and try to tap in with them and, you know, 
get me on some shows, get me on it. They're not the ones that are doing the work, man. No. Nope. You know what I'm saying? They manager, their business partners, their teammates, yeah. these other people that is some people face card. They hey man, you know what I'm saying? I'll do this XYZ. You know, I got this podcast. I put your artists on my podcast, but you gotta let them let my artists perform, man. You know what I'm saying, on this event out there in Carolina because we can't get on there. I don't know who to contact. You got direct plugs on that, Paul. Boom. Okay. Well, shit. What, what we gonna switch it out? But that artist don't know nothing about this agreement. Get what? Yeah. Hey, Pluto. We gonna be in our, uh in Carolina uh, next Saturday at this event. I don't know nothing. The management and Paul had no conversation about. It, you know what I'm saying? So. That's the whole thing. Like with me, I'm independent. I talk directly to the promoters. I talk directly to the people. I tap in directly with the people. So I have the connections myself. You know what I'm saying? When you see my videos on BET Jams, I talk to BET Jams. You know what I'm saying? When you see my videos on whatever platforms, I talk to those platforms or a representative or someone that's directly doing, you know, making it happen. It's yeah. not going through 10 other people. You can't walk up to these mainstream artists and think that they could give you the information that you see them doing. Because they're not the ones that are doing the work. They just show up. We call that yeah. the uh, don't watch us, the artists that don't watch us work. Because most artists, they just watch you work. Thanks. Now, you told me something the other day without giving up any secrets. Uh, you know, can you explain to these up and coming artists uh, how, you get, how you get paid shows? And how you making money off of these paid shows? Because they just come in here and they just make music, and then they think, "Oh, I should get paid shows." <laughs> and I get that all the time. Yeah. First of all, the the biggest thing is if you can't book a venue yourself and pack it out, then you shouldn't even expect should a paid show. show. Period. Secondly, you got a network, man. Your network determines your net worth. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to actually get out here and spend some money to promote your brand. It's just like McDonald's. If they these folks been in business before me and you even was born, but they still spend money on commercials. They still, you don't see McDonald's putting their food, you know, oh, we just going to use just some regular brown paper bags because we ran out of the McDonald's bags. No. Uh, yeah, you're right. I've never seen that. Come on, Never man. They got to have a bag with their logo on it. Yeah. That's so when even when a, when they throw it in the trash, you st they still being promoted. But yeah. when you go throw away something that you see a McDonald's cup, yeah. give it to the stomach, get the ground. Hey, I do want a Big Mac. You know what I'm saying? But what if they just had a styrofoam cup? It's all yeah. promotion. You know what I'm saying? You got to be a walking billboard. So they're going to spend the extra money to make sure they can put that M on their cup. They're going to yeah. spend the extra money to make sure they got the M on the bag. You know what I'm saying? So all this stuff really matters. You can't just say, oh, I'm McDonald's. I've been in business 69 years. Um, shit, they know my burgers. It's over with. Yeah. You're going to be out of business. And that's what, you know what Burger King's doing. They're literally, they will literally, if they run out of bags, they will just figure out oh, what don't throw we ain't got no bag, more bags. Or we ain't got no bags or we're out of this or we're out of that. They, but you see, right. every single thing gonna have the promo on it. Yeah. The wrapper that go around the hamburger, the sticker that go on the top of it. You know what I'm saying? The cup, the straw, the everything is the receipt. You know what I'm and saying? I'm glad you brought up McDonald's. It's the first job I ever worked, right? And I never <laughs> yeah. knew until I see the guy I worked for. He owned seven McDonald's, greatest one of the greatest men ever worked. But I never knew. Until I watched that McDonald's movie, that McDonald's is not a fast food restaurant. It's a real estate company. That's it's crazy. It's an actual real estate company, you know? And it's actually, I also look at it like an effing radio station. This is why. They don't really, as soon as they throw them M's up, that big, big M, Thanks. if people see that's coming, that's really all the advertising they need. They're like a, a walking advertising platform within itself. You know, right. Because sooner, like me and you start a radio station, if it reaches like a hundred miles, people are gonna just start tuning in with a hundred miles. Right. You know, just randomly tuning in. And McDonald's, as soon as you see that Joker, oh, McDonald's is coming sooner. They know. Oh man! As soon as the doors open, the drive-through is packed, man. So man. I love that you brought up McDonald's because it's a great, 
great business right. and, for you and, for that and that's what I mean about understanding the fundamentals. Like, yeah. I'm not going to go sell a burger come at down to selling burgers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But guess what? I understand product placement. I understand that I got to be a walking billboard. I understand that I got to have my logo stamped on everything. You know what I'm saying? I understand that I got to promote every day. I got to put my stamp on everything. So even when I'm not around, it's being promoted. You feel me? So that's what I mean by taking the fundamentals. I don't have to sell burgers because McDonald's is successful with burgers, but I could take away from what I actually see. And just How put your face on everything burgers. like they do. Right. Basically. Yeah. Put put the extras, you know what I'm saying? You're Set just up replacing just like you the got burgers on. with music. And you're just right. putting your face on everything like they do and applying Bang. their marketing strategy, their aggressive marketing strategy at that. Very aggressive marketing strategy. Yeah. You know, and, and that's the biggest thing, you know, like you got to take away from that what you can't. You don't want to do you can't do every single thing they do. I don't have billions of dollars to spend on commercials and billboards and this and that. But guess what? Let me figure out a way to create my own billboard. I'm not going to spend 20000 a month for one billboard for people passing by that don't even know my brand. But guess what? The people that do know my brand, let me get them this rolling billboard they can have in their car. For 30 days. If I give out one one um, you know what I'm saying, uh one car freshener, that might get me, you know what I'm saying? A thousand people might walk past this car. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I'm telling you, hundreds of people might get in this car within a month and they seen my brand. Uh heard the name. They may not even go to it, but guess what? I might be coming to their city and I might be doing some target marketing. And next day, you know. My face popping up on their social media. They said, damn, why? Well, I, I know this dude from somewhere. I yeah. know them dreads. I know. What, what is this dude from? Oh, he was in Sutton and Seth's car. Damn. What, hey, your boy coming to the city. Oh, I just met him at, at, at this uh, Sutton and Seth in Atlanta. Well, shit, yeah, let me go and tap back in with him, you know. So you just got to understand how to keep your name and people faces programming like it's just like radio you got it you can hear a song and hate it but you hear it enough time you'll be singing it in your head in your sleep 